Monkey D. Luffy is a very bad man. If you think that he's the hero of the series, then you are sorely mistaken. Because Luffy is in fact a nose-breaking, wedding-crashing, revenge-taking, gold-grabbing, Vivi-punching, Zoro-killing, Croc-a-momming, hero-hating, villain-loving, bath-invading, Usopp-beating, Robin-saving, meat-eating, scourge of the planet that's name we don't even know. But we do know that this named man is not this unnamed planet's hero. Nor has he ever intended to be, and that is precisely what makes him so compelling. Although interestingly, and originally, One Piece was going to be a very straightforward shonen about good versus evil. And the prototype Luffy would fall very firmly into the good and I would describe him as a hero. In the Romance Dawn prototypes of One Piece, Oda divided piracy into two types of people, the Peace Mains and the Morganeers. The former being freedom-loving pirates who don't steal and even avoid fighting other pirates unless absolutely necessary. Meanwhile, the Morganeers were your more classic style of Yar agree driven violent, battle, drud lusty bad things pirates. Messed up what I was saying, I'm not saying it again. You get the idea. <laughs> And to some degree, you can still see that divide in One Piece. You can take any given crew and clearly see whether they fall into Peace Main or Morganeer. But what Etchiro Oda very wisely did was remove this system and blur the border between the two. Because One Piece Luffy himself does not fit the prototype Luffy's definition of a Peace Main, not even close. And the Luffy that we see in One Piece is a very unique blend of both factions, which I think is reflected very well in One Piece, given that readers tend to see Luffy as a hero, whereas most of the citizens citizens in world view him as a villain, which is why when Damara Black assumed Luffy's identity, no one questioned it because it just made sense that Luffy was a depraved scoundrel. Monkey D. Luffy is neither hero nor villain, although I will say that if anything, he takes more offense at being called a hero than he does at being called a villain. Back on Fishman Island, Jinbei's plan was to turn Luffy into a hero so that he isn't portrayed as yet another human coming to subjugate them by beating Hody. The Fishmen needed someone that they could look up to, someone they could trust, someone that they could believe in, and Luffy wanted none of that. Hero? No way. We're pirates. I love heroes, but I don't want to be one. Do you even know what a hero is? Let's say there's a bunch of meat. Pirates have feasts and eat meat, but heroes give the meat to other people. I want to eat the meat. So a lot of people mistake this line as being pure gag, that this is another stupid Luffy one-liner. Oh, <laughs> classic monkey man. And to be fair, he does pretty much immediately agree to Jinbei's proposition after being promised meat. But Luffy's utter disgust at the concept of being a hero is very consistent throughout the entire series. Which makes a lot of sense when you consider that Luffy is the grandson of Garp the hero. And during his childhood, Garp was desperately and violently trying to mold Luffy into becoming the next generation of hero. Someone duty bound, which was completely antithetical to how Luffy wanted to live. I don't think that Luffy paid enough attention to know that his grandfather was literally called Garp the hero. But on a very basic level, Luffy understood that that was not what he wanted to be. And instead, Luffy's childhood inspiration were the villains of the world, the pirates, yar. And the very concept of piracy is incompatible with heroes. Piracy is by nature a lawless life where anything goes. And just how is one supposed to uphold truth, justice, and the American way in a lifestyle where truth and justice have no clear definition and no one cares about America because it's a random nation in West Blue led by a man named Hamburger. So speaking of hamburgers, even if he's not a hero, the whole not sharing food thing is very overblown when it comes to Luffy. Luffy does share food. He shares food often, just not necessarily his meat. For example, during Wano, Luffy gave Hyogoro the food exchange tickets, but those were for dumplings. But back on Water 7, Luffy used the leftover 100 million berries to buy food and booze for the post any Sobby party, which was incredibly generous. But it should be noted that he didn't do it for the people. People just ended up joining his 100 million berry party, and he allowed it. And look, this is gonna sound really, really stupid, but remember, this is also Luffy. If food isn't right in front of him, I don't think that Luffy can see it. I don't know if he's capable of seeing a hundred million berries and understanding how much meat that is. And the same goes for the food tickets in the prisoner mine. And this inability to look at the bigger picture is going to be a recurring theme with Luffy in this video, which isn't a bad thing. It actually, it's hugely responsible for why he is such a lovable protagonist. But Luffy's disgust towards heroics means that he's also not going to go out of his way to do stuff like say, I don't know, innovate award-winning flavor, and so stepping up for him in this area is the sponsor of this video, Fume, which is one of these awesome looking battery lacking fidget funning flavor sticks. And look, let's be clear, Fume is not a vape. There is no vapor, no nicotine, no batteries, just mm, glorious flavored air. You know, air, it's that thing that you're involuntarily suckling on at this very moment. A completely flavorless and empty experience.
So may I recommend you some orange vanilla? Or well, others, there, there, are, there are many others. Some of which are oddly specific, such as the cinnamon heart scores, which deliver a sense of warmth, bright cinnamon spice, and all of the care and affection that your parents neglected to give you as a child. <sighs> Thanks, Fume. And Fume has served over 300,000 customers. I am one of them, and if you wanted to be another one, then do go to the link in the description. And for a limited time, use my code GRANDLINEREVIEW to get your free topper. It's the perfect accessory for any Fume device. You just slip it on the mouthpiece for a softer, warmer feel. It's also chewable for those who love to fidget, which is me, and it's reusable. So head to tryfume.com, that's tryfum.com, and use code GRANDLINEREVIEW or scan the QR code on screen to get your free Fume topper when you order your journey pack today. Day. And thank you so much to Fume because their sponsorship allows us to bring you the best fictional pirate content possible as often as possible. And I also find them really fun to fidget with while I'm writing and editing videos. So try them out, but for now it's back to you, me. But on the topic of heroics, Luffy also tells Jinbei that he doesn't like being cheered on by anybody. Which is pretty wild because at the end of most major arcs these days, we now have entire civilizations cheering him on. We're getting to the point where we will actively have the entire planet cheering him on. But Luffy doesn't want any of that. His main focus, it is quite selfish, and it is freedom. Freedom for him specifically. Luffy's goal is to be the most free person in the world. And freedom isn't just a lack of tyranny, it's also an escape from responsibility, such as the heroes depicted in the Marines, responsible and duty-bound, but also within the Revolutionary Army. Luffy's father, Monkey D. Dragon, is a hero on the other side of politics, and he has an obligation and a duty to liberate people. Meanwhile, Luffy liberates people without feeling that obligation, which is Luffy's primary personal objection to the idea of being a hero. It is obligation, the obligation that comes along with it, because obligations are the enemy of the freedom. This is the reason why he didn't want to accept the Grand Fleet when they pledged themselves to him, because he didn't want to be tied to them or to his credit have them tied to him. He wanted freedom for them, but also mostly for him, because if these schmucks are following him everywhere, then it'll cramp his style. And this freedom directly translates into what makes Luffy such a force to be reckoned with. The reason why the four emperors stagnated in their quest for the One Piece is because of obligation. Obligations. An emperor can't just go and do something like, say, invade any slobby to save a single crew member, because that action has ramifications for their existing obligations. And the one time an emperor did try to do something similar when Whitebeard invaded Marineford to save Ace, it resulted in the dissolution of the Whitebeard pirates and all of the territories he protected being put in jeopardy. Luffy is incredibly serious in the best way possible. And you know, selfish, it tends to be used as a negative adjective, but there's nothing to stop someone from being both selfish and kind, or selfish and a good person or even selfish and generous. However, this isn't to say that Luffy is just a flat out all around good guy because he is not. As a notorious pirate man, Luffy relishes in his role as a villain of the world, always beyond thrilled with his new bounties and new notorieties. And when it comes to the issue of morality, Luffy sits very firmly in the gray area. Let's take a simple moral issue like say stealing, for example. At the end of the Skypiea arc, the Straw Hat steal an ass ton of gold that rightfully speaking belonged to the people of the sky. And what many often forget get is that this was actually Luffy's idea to steal the gold. He woke the crew up in the middle of the night and concocted a cunning plan with his crew to bolt with as much treasure as they could carry. That is not the sort of thing that a hero would do. It is absolutely what a pirate would do, and that's how Luffy chose to exercise his freedom. However, we as readers don't tend to see these sorts of actions as bad because they often coincide with the desires of the victims. To go back to Skypea, we know how the Sky people felt and that they were originally going to give Luffy a golden pillar as reward anyway. So this is a victimless crime, but that is not always the case. So let's take another moral issue, this time revenge. Luffy is a character capable of giving me chills for all sorts of different reasons, but one of the very few times where he's been capable of making me go, well mate, and taking a big step back was on Water 7, when the crew found Usopp beaten up and immediately set out to take revenge on the Frankie family. Busted right into their very funky house and he said, get ready to have every bone in your body's broken. And look, I get the anger. Watching the Frankie family beat up and humiliate Usopp twice is one of the most anger-inducing events in the entire series. I, me personally, wanted to break every bone in their bodies. But in a more morally standard story, the protagonist is supposed to be a voice of reason for the audience. Someone for the readers and watchers to look up to and emulate, which is definitely not what Luffy did here. It was pretty damn satisfying though. And that's one of the reasons why Luffy works so well as a protagonist. He may be a 
cultivated sun deity, but he carries himself with the flaws and indulgences of a human. You can identify with Luffy in a way that it's really difficult to identify with classical heroes, because Luffy often feels what we feel, with the difference being that he has the power and complete lack of obligation and social concern to act on it. And I believe that characters with a more traditional moral compass would not have taken revenge on the Frankie family, at least not without a very strict lesson and consequence attached to it. They probably would have found a different solution that didn't involve beating everyone up until every bone in their bodies was broken. But Luffy is also startlingly casual when it comes to the bad actions of others. Going back to Frankie, he ended up becoming a crew member, which is pretty wild considering that his family beat Usopp half to death on two separate occasions. And both times Frankie's response was, and I quote, lol. So Luffy is either very forgiving or very forgetful or, and this is, this is the one I most believe, he just doesn't really care beyond the moment itself. Such as during Impel Down, where Luffy gathered a whole temporary crew, mostly made from previous villains, all of whom had done horrific things, no exceptions. Let's take Galdino. He tried to turn Zoro, Nami, and Vivi into morbid dead statues for his art collection. However, the more egregious crew member was definitely Crocodile. When Luffy released Crocodile, it was because Crocodile said, man, I lost interest in Alabaster. Don't care about that anymore. Don't, don't worry about it. And Luffy believed him, but there were any number of other kingdoms that he could have been screwing over. And also just like, what if he was just lying? He could have gone back and decimated the kingdom to look for Pluton again. And the same sort of thing goes for how Luffy immediately accepted both Bonclay and Nico Robin as treasured friends, despite the fact that they were both very willing participants in a war designed to kill millions of people. I don't mean this as an insult, but Monkey D. Luffy is not capable of looking at the bigger picture. He is a man with the most extreme of tunnel vision. And just like what I said about having food in front of him, he can only be antagonized by a villain when they harm someone standing directly right next to him or him himself. The greater concept of people is too abstract for Luffy. He doesn't have the mental bandwidth to really consider the greater impact of his actions one way or the other. Whether that's saving an entire country or releasing a ton of very dangerous impel down prisoners into the world. That's why throughout, say, Wano, Luffy is always thinking about Tama. He is primarily fighting Kaido so that she will be able to eat. Or when taking on Arlong, Luffy doesn't stand up to him for the sake of Kokuyashi Village or because of Arlong aiming to take control of East Blue or racism or because it's the right thing to do or anything. Luffy ultimately beats up Arlong because Arlong made his navigator cry. But even if it's happening right in front of Luffy, he won't automatically go to help because it's the right thing to do. Which was established very early on in Syrup Village. Luffy and Zoro were impressed by Usopp's resolve to fight the Black Cat Pirates, which is why they decided to help. And to this, Luffy says one of the coldest lines to this day being, who'd risk their life out of pity? Implying that if all Usopp was after was pity, then Luffy, Zoro, and Nami may have just been on their way. And Luffy will almost never help characters out of pity or sympathy. Another great example would be Momonosuke. Initially, Luffy outright refused to help Momonosuke defeat Kaido until the eight-year-old child proved that he was worthy of helping with a show of heartfelt bravery, just like Usopp did on Syrup Village. But I feel like we can all agree that one of the biggest moral lines you can cross is the issue of killing. Not that that happens a lot in One Piece, but not for lack of trying. Luffy isn't Batman. He doesn't have a rule about not killing. When he does stuff like send Wapple flying with a bazooka, there is an extraordinarily high chance that he lands in the sea and drowns. And the same sort of thing can be said about most villains he defeats. They tend to survive because of Oda's policy as an author rather than Luffy's actions. And if he did incidentally kill any of these antagonists, as he may very well have done with Kaido by punching him into the magma, even if that happens, he's not gonna be losing any sleep over it. It's not gonna change him. It's not gonna send him into crisis. It's not gonna make him go, my God, what have I done? I, monkey man took a life. He's not gonna do that. He's just gonna eat some meat and move on. And you could also argue that what Luffy does is worse than death. In the SBS of volume four, Oda responded to why Luffy doesn't kill people, clarifying that Luffy's aim is to shatter the dreams of his enemies, which Oda says is as painful as death himself. Except that that pain has no relief. It, along with the opponent, lingers on, and they have to live with death until real death. Although there is at least one rare example of a time where Luffy did gun to kill a person, that person being Zoro. When Luffy thought that Zoro had sliced up those 100 very lovely and not at all bounty hunting people at Whiskey Peak, Luffy didn't even give Zoro a chance to explain himself. Luffy yelled, die, and went in for the kill. For the sake of fairness, I don't think this one incident should count too much in this argument, because it is one of the weirder inconsistent moments of Luffy's writing. I am convinced that Oda today would not have had Luffy say that. And on that note, it is also important to flag that pre-time skip 
Luffy was a completely different beast to post time skip Luffy. Almost every example I've used in this video is pre time skip because modern Luffy does admittedly resemble more of a stereotypical hero, by which I mean he executes far less morally ambiguous actions. And I think that's reflective of Oda's personal evolving philosophy. As a young author, Oda was very much set on making his mark in the manga world. He was very much like Luffy in terms of his relentless and soul drive to make his dream come true. However, Oda himself eventually became out of sync with Luffy. Oda grew, he had a family, and now he has very different views, which I think Luffy is slowly maturing into as well. And by the end of One Piece, Luffy may very well end up going all the way to becoming a hero, but it won't be through the standard journey. There's a certain purity about Luffy. When he does perform good actions, you know there are no ulterior motives. Luffy doesn't want the glory, he doesn't want the thanks, he does it purely because he personally believes it's the right thing to do. And to Luffy, the good, the bad, and morally gray actions that he commits, they're all the same to him. They're ideologically consistent with his philosophy on freedom. And in the end, he doesn't care what you label him so long as it involves the words Pirate King. And I always come back to these two pages during Fishman Island. When the people ask Luffy to define himself and he simply replies, friend or foe, you can decide that for yourselves. Because even if Luffy is a hero according to your own personal definition, Luffy will never be a hero under his. And honestly, you should probably be glad about that because if Luffy did share your definition of a hero, then this series might look a bit darker. And if you're looking for a hero, then I would direct your gaze towards Kobe, someone willing to take on the responsibility and obligation of being a hero with a completely selfless attitude. By the end of One Piece, he will be our hero by traditional metrics, but Luffy will be the most free, and to him, that's all that matters. And thanks so much again to Fume for sponsoring this video, and please do check them out through the link in the description.